Josh finds some time travel pills, which he uses to win back his ex, Maggie. Mike takes Josh to the snowy wilderness in search of the last woman on Earth who hasn't rejected him yet. As they stand in the middle of a snowstorm, Mike takes out his list of bachelorettes and expresses how Josh failed miserably in his attempt at dating. They soon find a tent where a woman named Uncluck 2 lives. Before entering, Mike reminds Josh that if he fails to win her affection, he's out of options and will remain single for life. Worried that this might be the case, Josh makes his way inside. Not long after, the three gather by the fire, awkwardly staring at each other. Suddenly, Josh gives a heart-shaped box to Uncluck 2, but she puts it on her head, unsure of what the object is. Josh laughs awkwardly, but Mike reassures him that he's doing great. Just then, Uncluck 2 speaks in her native language, which, for some reason, Mike understands. He translates for Josh and says that she's asking if he's a god. Being the good wingman that he is, Mike exaggerates his response to Uncluck 2, suggesting that Josh is, indeed, a powerful god. Her eyes widen in amazement, so Josh takes this as a sign to ask Uncluck 2 about herself. He asks if she likes music, and Mike translates this accordingly. Uncluck 2 is glad he asked, so she takes the heart-shaped box and performs a beat. When she's done, the men clap for her. Just then, Mike tells Josh that it's time to pop the big question. With this, Josh nervously asks Uncluck 2 if she wants to have dinner with him. However, as soon as Mike translates this, the smile disappears from Uncluck 2's face. She thinks Josh is very nice, and she appreciates that he's a powerful god. However, she doesn't want to jeopardize their friendship. Disappointed, Josh says that it's cool and he respects her decision. Then he leaves the tent with Mike. As they face the snowstorm again, Josh gives up the possibility of ever getting a girlfriend. Days after, Josh sulks in his house, thinking that he's hopeless and unlovable. As he acknowledges that some people are just meant to die alone, Mike passively agrees while playing a video game. Suddenly, Josh's phone rings. When he sees that it's his ex-girlfriend, Maggie, he jumps out of his seat to answer. She wants to meet him for lunch, and this excites him. As he gets ready, Josh tells Mike that all the past rejections make sense now. He claims that he didn't click with the other women because he's meant to be with Maggie. Later on, Josh meets Maggie in a restaurant, and he gives her the most enthusiastic hug. As they get seated, Maggie says she's a bit nervous, but as she says she'll just break the news, Josh says the same thing. They both laugh, and Josh thinks it's cute that they're finishing each other's sentences. He begins to ramble about things that go together, and Maggie only chuckles. Just then, she finally reveals the news to Josh. She's getting married to her boyfriend, Graham. In disbelief, Josh asks her again to be sure. However, the confirmation only breaks him. He casually says that it's cool, but when Maggie shows him her engagement ring, Josh's heart literally explodes out of his chest. With blood splattered on her face, Maggie asks him if he's okay. As he reassures her that he's fine, his heart plops down on the plate. His veins pour out more blood, but he remains persistent that he's fine. Suddenly, a waiter comes to their table, informing Josh that an ambulance is on its way. He asks if there's anything he can do in the meantime, so Josh asks him for some French onion soup. As they wait for the soup and the ambulance, Josh asks Maggie about the wedding details. Maggie gladly tells him that they hired a wedding planner. However, Josh has lost too much blood at this point, so he briefly collapses on the table. The paramedics arrive, so they load him up onto the stretcher. Before they take him away, Josh asks Maggie what song she selected for the first dance. She responds that it's Wonderwall, which hurts Josh even more because it used to be their song. She asks him again if he's truly okay with her getting married, so Josh says that he is and even congratulates her. Finally, he's taken to the hospital. Days later, Josh goes to a convenience store with Mike. As they go to the counter, he obsesses over Maggie's engagement, which his friend doesn't help with since he calls her fiancé a great guy. Mike then discovers some male enhancer pills, but the cashier warns him that the product may cause irreparable damage to the liver. However, Mike only slams his bills to the table and gulps the pill down. Meanwhile, Josh recalls when he bought cheap carnation flowers for Maggie's birthday. Wondering if he had bought her a better present, they wouldn't have had the fight that caused a breakup. As Mike groans from the pill's side effects, he reassures Josh that it is what it is. He says he can't turn back time, but ironically, Josh finds some time travel pills by the counter. The pills allow the user to travel back in time for two minutes before returning to the present. The cashier shares that he took one once and saw some dinosaurs. He warns Josh that the pills may cause irreparable damage to the space-time continuum. However, this doesn't faze him, and he gulps one down and gets transported to the past. The pill takes him one year earlier, where he finds his past self buying purple carnations for Maggie. He quickly approaches himself, saying that he wouldn't buy the flowers but get the necklace that Maggie always wanted. His past self screams in horror, but his time is running out, so he insists that he just trusts him. When Josh returns to the convenience store, Mike is still groaning from his liver pain. Suddenly, Maggie approaches him, telling Mike that they told him not to take the pills. And when he sees the necklace that she always wanted, he realizes that his past self took his advice. Because of this, he's still in a relationship with Maggie. 
He rejoices, then he tells Maggie that they need to make up for lost time. After a steamy session, he says he wants to treat her to dinner. Maggie suggests having sushi, but when Josh checks his wallet, he realizes that he's broke. He's suggesting eating at the falafel place, which is also a dry cleaner. Hearing this wipes the smile off Maggie's face, but she still says it's a good option. Worried that they might break up again, Josh says they're getting sushi. He then gulps down one of the pills and returns nine years to the past, when he was thinking about majoring in philosophy. When he arrives, he tells his past self to major in economics where his life will be much better. Although his past self is freaking out, he tells himself to just trust him. Suddenly, he gets sucked into the present, where he finds himself in a fancy restaurant with Maggie. Once again, his past self took his advice, and he has all of the funds he needs to improve his relationship. Just as they're about to eat, Maggie notices some bearded guys and Josh notices that she's a bit attracted to them. Because of this, he distracts Maggie and takes one of the pills. Josh goes 20 years to the past, where his young self observes his dad shaving his beard. When the old man leaves, Josh appears and tells himself to grow distinctive facial hair. His younger version runs away, and before getting sucked back, he tells himself to trust him. When Josh returns to the present, he realizes that his young self took his advice, as he has distinctive facial hair. To his surprise, he's at the altar where he's about to get married to Maggie. Josh is extremely happy, and he didn't even screw up the space-time continuum, or so he thought. Unbeknownst to him, he has caused a horrible dystopian future for mankind, where Earth has been dominated by the alien overlord Trakanon. As Josh settles into his new life with Maggie, he decides to visit the convenience store where he bought the pills. He finds the cashier and immediately starts to update him about his life. However, when the cashier turns around, he reveals his half-cyborg face. Shocked, Josh asks where the video game magazines are, just so he can leave the awkward scene. He goes to the magazine racks, where everything that's sold has Trakanon's propaganda. He buys one with video game content, then happily flips through it as he walks home, ignoring a man getting shot for retaliating against Trakanon's soldiers. When Josh gets home, Maggie gets surprised by what he's reading since he once said it was for kids who played too many video games. Suddenly, Maggie gets up to watch their favorite show. Josh thinks it's Carnival, but it turns out to be Meet the Press, which is a very unlikely genre for him. Confused by what he's been doing all those years, Josh sets out to catch up with Mike. He finds him in Trakanon's headquarters, where he works to fulfill the Overlord's central needs. Mike explains that it's a great gig with many benefits, like dental care. Suddenly, Mike gets alerted that he's about to go on duty in two minutes. Because of this, he asks Josh to help him stretch his legs. As Josh does just that, Mike expresses how it feels good to hang out as they did years ago. Mike understands how Josh has been busy with his marriage and career, making him realize that he abandoned his friendship to be with Maggie. He also stopped playing video games because he's been occupied with trading bonds. Suddenly, the horn blows, and Mike leaves to work. Shortly after, Josh is captured by activists and delivered to the general. To his surprise, it's his sister, Liz. Liz reassures the soldier that she'll take care of the matter. When they're finally alone, she expresses how happy she is to see Josh because she can finally give him her wedding gift. Josh wonders why it's a golf club, so Liz explains that the pro in his country club suggested that brand to her. Suddenly, the headquarters gets attacked, and Liz tells Josh to stay undercover as she shoots Trakanon soldiers. While she's occupied, Josh ponders on what his life has become. He did change so much, but Liz reassures him that it's fine as long as he's happy. However, that's just it. He's not. Because of this, Josh goes home to Maggie and tells her that he's no longer happy. He adds that he's been pretending to be something he's not, which doesn't give him fulfillment. However, all that Maggie notices is how strange he's been acting. She says he's scaring her, so Josh reassures her that he can fix things. As he takes out the time travel pills from his pocket, he freezes in panic as he realizes that he has already consumed them all. With no choice, he suggests getting divorced because they were never meant to be married in the first place. Maggie says they can't, so Josh sympathizes with her, saying that he knows it'll be hard. However, she groans in annoyance and clarifies that Trakanon is Catholic. Divorce is punishable by death, so they're basically married for life. When she calms down, she says hail Trakanon to a little triangular device over the fireplace. She tells Josh to do the same, and although he's confused, he complies. After this, Maggie cries her eyes out while Josh plumps down on a chair, brainstorming ideas on how to fix the space-time continuum. As he looks at the little device, he comes up with a plan. He soon meets Mike and asks if there's any way to get to Trakanon. However, he can only come in close contact with the Overlord if he becomes one of his central workers. Desperate, Josh pleads to be part of the harem. Mike questions his skills, so he asks how wide he can open his mouth. Josh demonstrates, and Mike gets impressed, thus earning him a spot in their group. After getting into their costumes, the two head out to report to the Overlord. Mike enthusiastically introduces Josh, but Trakanon notices that he's a bit small. Because of this, Mike reassures him that he's been bulking up by eating more. Trakanon permits Josh to join, then he tells Mike to start performing. 
Suddenly, seductive music plays and Mike gracefully dances to it. This excites Trakanon, so he commands him to do his task. This irks Josh, but when Trakanon looks at him, he begins dancing in a panic. However, he's a terrible dancer, so the Overlord just tells him to help Mike. Unsure of what to do, he rubs on random parts of Trakanon's body. Just then, his eyes land on the Overlord's scepter, so he grabs it and begins shooting the guards. Josh expresses how Trakanon shouldn't even be on his planet, so he kills the alien Overlord by stabbing his eye with the scepter. Mike screams in agony as he has grown attached to the Overlord. In the streets, the people celebrate their newfound liberty. Josh's mother hysterically tells her husband that their son saved the human race. However, he only comments Nido as if it's to be expected. Meanwhile, Josh and Maggie sign some papers to finalize their divorce. As she returns her ring, she expresses how Josh ruined her life. Just then, he stops her, saying that there's someone he wants her to meet. Outside, a group of people cleans up Trakanon's murals. One of them is Graham, Maggie's fiancé from the original timeline. Finally ready to let go, Josh introduces Maggie to Graham. He then returns to Liz and Mike and tells them that he's ready to let go, so he invites them to go out. However, Mike says he's not ready to date yet, as he can't simply get over someone like Trakanon. Liz also rejects the offer, saying that she needs to get to work since she has a chance to become a partner at her firm after all the partners have died. Josh reminds them that they're young and single. Plus, Trakanon is dead and it's Saturday night. Liz and Mike look at each other before finally agreeing. Josh smiles and the three head down the road to enjoy the rest of the night. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.